Titration as a laboratory technique is fairly straightforward. A titration involves two reagents. First of all, a solution called the titrant in a long, thin piece of glassware called a burette with a stopcock on the end. And second of all, a sample called the analyte, which is usually held in a flask, usually an Erlenmeyer flask, below the titrant. And we drip the titrant into the analyte until an end condition called the end point is reached. In this chapter, the titrant and analyte are acids and bases, and so what we're talking about are acid-base titrations based on the neutralization reaction between the acid and the base. The goal of any titration is to determine an unknown amount or number of moles of a substance in the analyte. To do this, we add the titrant, driving the reaction forward until we reach a point, usually indicated by a visual change, but not always. It can also be determined quantitatively, as we'll see in this chapter, in fact, where the added titrant has just consumed all of the analyte. Usually this is accompanied by a color change or some other observable change in the analyte titrant solution in the flask. This condition for acid-base titrations is known as the equivalence point because for an acid-base reaction involving the transfer of a single proton from the acid to the base, at the equivalence point, the amount of titrant added, let's say we were using the base as a titrant, the amount of base added via dripping out of the burette is equal to the amount of acid present in the original sample, and we have just added enough base to completely consume the acid according to this irreversible and, and complete proton transfer from the acid to the strong base hydroxide. So on a basic level, titration allows us to determine the concentration of the acid based on the number of moles of hydroxide, for example, that we add in via dripping from the burette. I'm going to reproduce a couple of figures from your text on this slide, figure 16.6 in McMurray, so you may want to follow along there as we go through this, but let's talk first about a few more practical details of titration. As we said before, a titration involves a long, thin piece of glassware with graduations and a stopcock on the bottom known as a burette. The graduations on the side allow us to tell how much volume of titrant we've added, and the titrant is held up here in this compartment. Below the burette, we have a flask often it's an Erlenmeyer flask, and inside that flask we start with pure analyte. But of course as we drip the titrant into the analyte over time we end up with a combined solution of analyte and titrant. And in an acid-base titration a proton transfer process, an acid-base process, is occurring inside this Erlenmeyer flask. Let's consider a situation in which the titrant is an aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide and the analyte is a strong acid, such as HCl. When performing acid-base titrations, to determine the equivalence point, we can actually follow the pH of the analyte titrant mixture in the Erlenmeyer flask as a function of the volume of titrant added. So we're measuring the pH, for example, via a pH electrode placed into the solution right here. So early in the titration, we start at a pH that's less than 7. That should make sense, since we're beginning with an analyte solution of a strong acid, HCl. As we add the titrant, that pH increases. It starts out increasing slowly, but then pretty quickly starts to ramp up, and eventually flattens out again. At some point on this curve, and we'll have a lot more to say about this point in future discussions, we have an equal number of moles of titrant that we've added to the number of moles of HCl that were present in the original analyte. So at this point, which happens to be halfway sort of up the slope of this steep region of the titration curve, we can say that the number of moles of NaOH added, which we can get from the volume of titrant added times its concentration, which we're going to know, is equal to the number of moles of HCl in the original sample. So at this point, we've actually consumed all of the HCl but this is the definition of the equivalence point and it always shows up sort of halfway up this slope. For reasons that will become clear in future discussions, 
the pH at the equivalence point for this titration between a strong base and a strong acid is equal to 7. We have a neutral solution at the equivalence point. After that point, the pH continues to increase because as we add more titrant, we're adding base. And one thing I want you to think about is what this pH up here near the top of the titration curve represents. At very large volumes of titrant, we've consumed all of the acid present, and all we're doing is adding additional hydroxide and water present in the titrant. So the maximum pH here is the pH of the titrant solution itself. We can't decrease the concentration of hydronium any lower than it is in the titrant solution, right through the addition of additional base. And so our maximum pH is limited by the pH of the titrant. So in terms of the information we can glean from a strong, strong titration curve like this, notice that we can identify that the analyte is an acid because the initial pH is lower than 7. We can identify the titrant as a base as the pH is increasing as we add titrant. We can identify the concentration of the titrant from this maximum pH, although that will usually be known by other means. And probably most importantly for a strong, strong titration, we can identify the moles of HCl and the concentration of HCl in the analyte by simply applying ideas from solution stoichiometry and the fact that at this equivalence point, at this point on the titration curve, the moles of hydroxide added is equal to the moles of HCl in the original sample. This is what we call the equivalence point.